Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. This time we're looking at a faulty Archimedes keyboard. So it's got a sticker on here from France Telecom that says HS. I'm not sure what that means. Um, yeah, you can see the Archimedes logo here. It's a bit dirty. It's missing the clear piece of uh, plastic flap that comes over here, but it's not the end of the world. Um, now I've tested this, it doesn't seem to do anything um, in terms of at least booting my A440, you know, holding down delete to reset the CMOS. So we'll start by just going straight inside it and have a look to see if we can see any damage. There may be a fuse on these, I can't remember. I know there's a fuse on the motherboard, but oh, on some of the Archimedes models. So if we get the eight or so screws off from around the edges here. So we're in there. This is not my first time obviously going inside one of these. I went in one of these when I looked at my A440. So I need to get the uh, two screws on each side off here. This was uh, another donation from Zarkos. It came with all of the wonderful Archimedes systems he sent. Well, I'm saying wonderful. There's an awful lot of uh, 3000s that are going to be super corroded. I am not really looking forward to those, if I am honest. Just because there's going to be that much corrosion damage on them, I could spend, imagine myself spending 20 hours on each one or something. So now we've got those screws out, the keyboard should uh, hopefully, I think, come out. Oh, is the one in the middle? Yeah, it's been a while since I've been in these, I forgot. There's a couple of screws here as well that just kind of hold the board uh, and the keyboard together. And there's one over there. Yeah, and there's one over here as well, I think. Just to give a bit of strength to the middle of the keyboard, I think. Yeah, there we go, that's out. So the question is, what's wrong with this? Well, there's a lot of parts on here, isn't there? Uh, we've got an EEPROM. Uh, I think that's, a, is that a crystal? Could be, we've got some sort of MCU here. There is, There are some uh, chips here that could be repaired. Well, that's a bit loose on there. Look, that might be the issue, unless I've just done that. Yeah, that could be the issue, because it's come out of here, look. So it might be as simple as that. Um, let's just try and connect that back up if we can. You see what's supposed to happen is this uh, This is supposed to be under there like that. Let's see if I can use my uh, fine nose pliers to accommodate this. I don't know whether there's going to be enough clearance there to squeeze that back under there. I might just need to put a new cable to on it. I'll tell you what, let's just do that. It's going to be far, it's going to be far easier just to cut the cable tight off I think. Yeah, so remember the notches on the underside there, and uh, we'll just you know we can pull it up like that, connect it back on here. Yeah, that, I'm sure that was it. I'm sure that was the fault. It's going to be the simplest fault ever. That, um, but if we now cable tie that back in place there, I suspect that's going to be all right. So I've got a new cable tie here. If we uh, just carefully uh, push that through and around, uh, stick it through the hole there. Yeah, not the easiest thing to do this, and um, we'll feed it through there now. I'm not going to tighten it just yet, I'm going to get things in position, so we'll tighten a little bit like that. And then what I want to do, the problem is if we push this too high, can you see it's pushing this up here? This is the problem. I don't think it'll be a problem, I think... Yeah, I think it's going to be alright. I think with the, the, the upward force there like that, you can see it's looser at this end than that end, but it's kind of pushing it into position. So I think it'll be okay. I think if we just sort of hold that like that and tighten the cable tie here. And I flip that over, I'm holding it in position. What I want to do is pull this like this, make it super, super tight here. Yeah, it's not going to go beyond that, I don't think, so we'll just uh, trim off that little bit there. And there we go, and there we go. You can see that's super tight. So yeah, this is going to be the shortest video ever, but you know what? It's still interesting. So the other thing I would do while we're here, you know, make sure that ground tab there is nice and firm. We all know it is. You could uh, press the uh, e to make sure it's into a socket, okay. And then the obvious thing is, you know, you could clean up and dust this and stuff. I'll perhaps uh, clean it from the outside and just vacuum it. I don't think it's going to need much more. Uh, and inspect on the inside here, just check for bad dry solder joints and things, but everything looks okay. The one thing I would say is those uh, pins down the reset kind of look a little bit dull and grey, but they're okay there, it's not a problem. So let's just reassemble it and go and give it a try. So rather than reassemble it, I thought let's just give it a try, and you can see straight away it's working. We've got a caps lock light, there was no LED before. Now my A440 has got the batteries removed at the moment because I had to uh, just temporarily put it in storage for a little bit. 
because I've just got so much stuff out. Now if I hold down delete, hopefully that will reset, there you go, it's working. That wasn't happening before, the keyboard was doing nothing. So that has reset the uh, settings, it should boot up as normal there, it's not going to have the hard disk or anything configured. But yeah, as you can see, that's working. Let's go into edit, I think did I double click on that, no I didn't. We load edit, and um, we'll just uh, make sure every key's working. Uh, one, two, three. Because the other thing is, it may benefit from being torn down. Because these have got like little silver contacts, I think, haven't they? Like a little silver pad stuck onto a sponge. It gives them quite a nice feel. I quite like this keyboard. Ironically, it's got a sponge there. It doesn't feel spongy. That's the shift, isn't it? So if I press shift and that, that's working. Yeah, everything is working. The keyboard's fine. No worries at all. So that was the shortest repair ever. So beyond just cleaning this up, uh, you can see obviously it's a bit dirty. The other thing we need to do is secure this mouse port. I need to do something inside, stick something in there. Maybe stick something under the board or something just to hold it up a little bit. Because you can't quite get the mouse in. It's like you've got to do that. Does that make sense? You've got to sort of pull, you know, the port down a little bit. So I'm suspecting that maybe one of the mounts or something is broken or missing inside from a previous impact or something. And actually inspecting this, there's nothing broken or missing. I think it's just the board. Maybe it's had a bit of a too much pressure here over a period of time, which has meant that it's been pulled down. There's nothing that presses this from the inside. Um, the only thing I can do is the plastic bottom part here, it just marries with the underneath there a little bit. You know, there's a gap. So if I stick a couple of pieces of double um, this foam stuff here, you know, about that thickness actually, just there on the very edge, the plastic piece underneath will just press it up a little bit, which will be enough just to get the uh, mouse in easily. It, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's uh, had a a knock or something at some point in the case but it's like the board the board is a little bit warped if anything it needs to be pressed like that there yeah so a little unorthodox there you can see i've got uh, four layers of that there um it nice it provides a nice spongy sort of bit of pressure as you'll see if i uh, now stick this back on and uh, obviously with the screws in just watch it now you can see it's totally essentially aligned so yeah i mean alternatives to that if you wanted something a bit more reliable you could get one of those little rubber sticky feet you know you can get like uh, not that small but replacement sticky feet that's about the same height as that you could cut one of those in half or something stick it on the edge there just under the pcb that's going to be a bit sturdier but uh, i'm going to see that'll be all right that will do the job when it's screwed together now the mouse as you can see you know we've got total access there to get the mouse in perfectly before the bottom half of the circle was below the plastic here so it was proven very difficult to get the mouse in and out but there was nothing missing on it nothing broken on it it's probably just the board on this side i think is sagged a bit with age there you go you can see i cleaned the reset button up here and all around here just using a toothbrush and some ipa so if we uh, does it go this way yeah it goes that way try and plug the mouse in now there you go no problems at all, go straight in. You still have to hook it on the underside, but that's how you do these connectors. You know, try and get the underside of the connector on first and then just push it in, but no worries. So I'll just clean some of the marks off with IPA. That looks like a footprint. <laughs> that looks like someone stood on that at some point in the past. It wouldn't surprise me. I think it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's been stored somewhere and it's been trampled on and thrown around and beaten up. But anyway, it is working 100%. And as you can see, I used the keyboard there to type in the commands to re-enable my hard disk. So there were several commands, well, four or five commands there. So yeah, the keyboard is working 100%. So I've given it a quick clean. That one's now ready to go out. Uh, if you can support the channel, please see the link down below. Uh, for Patreon, a uh, dollar a month is um, greatly uh, appreciated and just helps me to continue doing these videos. You know, it pays for parts, components and running costs and stuff. Uh, everything needed really just to keep going so without my patrons this channel uh, wouldn't be possible so yeah thank you very much to all the people that support me by patreon uh, i hope you found the video interesting thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video